These ruins used to be a beautiful church. Now this place has been claimed by plants. But hope is not gone. Just like these plants, the Seventh-day Adventist Church took root in this country nearly 100 years ago. In 1926, the first Adventist missionaries to Liberia, R. Helbig and E. Flammer, arrived. A year later, these German missionaries established Liberia's first Adventist church. I started going to church here in 1989 by my, uh, my late father who was once a deacon of the church. He used to carry me to church when I was a little child and brought the school here and they encouraged us, the young children from the church, to come here and go to school. There I was in the school and then he talked to me uh, to join the baptismal class in the church. So at that time I used to come, with, come to church by my dad, but I was not too regular. But from his effort, I was able to be convinced and become a member of the church. After Elder May was baptized, the first Liberian civil war erupted. Political and military conflict forced many church members to flee. During the war, both the church and the school were burnt down by rebels. We could hear gunshot. Yeah, we could hear gunshot. So those who left behind gave us the information that your church is broken down, is being burnt. A place which was once a blessing and a source of joy was now reduced to ruins. But after the conflict subsided, a faithful group worshipped in the only area that survived the destruction. To this day, they joyfully worship together and are confident that if the place is rebuilt, 
the congregation can be restored to what it once was. Sadly, this small group's funds are limited. It would take a miracle for them to reconstruct even a portion of the building. If I had money, I would do it on my own. With the congregation that we have here, we are not able to even face one structure here. So my anticipation is for the World Church to come to our aid so that this place can be rebuilt. Your 13th Sabbath offering will help rebuild the birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Liberia, where a place of worship and a school can be established again. Please pray for God's people in Liberia so that this dream can become a reality. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter. Good morning, church. You and I have a privilege today of opening God's Word, this love letter from our Heavenly Father to know Him and to understand His heart. Today we begin in our Sabbath school study for this new quarter, for the next three months, this study about what friendship evangelism means. What does it mean to witness to the world around us of God's goodness and who He is and what He does in our lives? Our memory verse for this week is a powerful one. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's found in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And the question that sets us up for this week's study is this, why witness? Why should we witness? The answer for me of that question is found in the answer to another question. Who do I want to spend eternity with? When I think about my family, and I think about my friends, I think about my neighbors, I think about my co-workers, I think about those people that I interact in businesses around my neighborhood every day. And I'm going to invite you to do something right now. You can hit pause, but when you hit pause, I'm going to invite you to get a pen and a paper or to use your phone or your computer. And I'm going to invite you to make a list of all the people that you want to spend eternity with. I have to admit, this is a list I myself have not yet written, but as I studied for this lesson, I thought about who do I want to spend eternity with? Who do I want to see there? The obvious answer is everybody. We want everybody to be saved. And that's a great sentiment. But for me, everybody actually has a name. Everybody has a face. Everybody has a story. And for me, it's personal. So as I, as I invite you to take out that pen and paper, the computer or your phone, and I ask you to pray, who do you want to spend eternity with? This will answer the question, why should we witness? Because I want to spend eternity with those people in my life that are important. And there's something else that we're going to explore today, and it's the heart of God. That's the primary reason why we witness. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and invite the Spirit to lead and speak to us personally and powerfully this morning. God, as we open your word, the love letter from you, our Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak personally and powerfully to each person who listens and spends this time with me this morning in your word. I pray you will speak to all of us, Lord, that we may know your heart and that our heart will be so intertwined with yours that your desires become our desires, your wants become our wants, your dreams become our dreams, and that, Lord God, our lives will be forever changed and also the lives of those that we witness to will be forever changed as well. In your name we pray, amen. As we look at it this morning, I have a few notes here I'm going to be referencing for a moment. So if I glance away, just know that I am thinking and praying for you. But as we look at it, what does it mean? What are we witnessing about? Well, first we're witnessing about 
the God of Scripture. The story of God who asked the question of Adam and Eve when they ran away from Him and when they hid themselves because of their sin and they tried to cover their nakedness that they experienced with fig leaves. And here God calls out to them this question, Where are you? This is the question God is speaking throughout the whole history of the Scriptures and all human history. Where are you? God is seeking. He's taking the initiative. He is making the first step to come towards us. He didn't wait for us to get our act together. He didn't wait for us to make it right with Him. Though we turned from God, though we rejected Him, though we tried to go and live our own way in our own strength, God took the initiative and came to each one of us. That is a beautiful picture that Scripture gives us as we look at the beginning of our study this week. So we are witnessing to God's goodness and His love and His character and who He is when we witness to others. The second thing we're witnessing is who He is and what He has done in our lives personally. We want to share what God has done for us. It's our story intermingled with His story as well. So this is what we're witnessing to. Luke 19, chapter 10, gives us the picture of Jesus' first and foremost desire in his heart. For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus came to seek the lost. There's many stories about that in the Scriptures from the Old to the New Testament. And you're going to be hearing those stories as we talk about our new sermon series, The Kingdom of God. For this quarter. It beautifully dovetails this Sabbath school study, so we invite you to work and study the lesson. Romans is a beautiful ex- explanation and an outline of how God reveals Himself, because witnessing is revealing. We are revealing God to others. Romans chapters 1 and 2 talk about how nature reveals to the Gentiles, to everybody in the world, about God's invisible attributes, who God is. We see this invisible God through the things that He has made. We see design in everything that's made. Even the snowflake, that simple snowflake that falls from the sky to the ground, it's intricate designs. When we look at the way amino acids and and proteins are laid out in biology, that they have to be in a certain order for certain things to happen, God's design is seen. In the benevolence of one human to another, or the love and care that animals give to their offspring, we see God's love, we see His character shown and displayed in so many ways. The Jews had direct prophetic revelation from God when He spoke to their leaders, when He spoke to them in manifold ways. Romans is a beautiful outline that shows God and how He reaches out to all of us. In fact, I love that in Romans 10, 14, and 15, it talks about how, ask the question, you know, how can people be saved if they don't know? And how will they know if they don't hear? And how can they hear if no one tells them, if no one shares with them the gospel message? Romans reminds us that we, as the lesson study says, I love this quote from the lesson study, it says, we do not witness to give people their only chance to be saved. We witness to give them their best chance. And the other quote is, We are God's link in the plan of salvation to reach lost people with the glory of the gospel. People cannot see the goodness of God in its complete form unless we share with them what God has done in our life. How could they know what God could do for them if we hold back what God has done for us? And I love the thought that, you know what, we're not the only way that God can communicate with others. But what if in that moment, God uses us as the best way, not because we're great, but because God's great, working in our lives. What if God says, Ben, or you listening here, what if you are the best way in that moment for someone to know God, to see God through your life? Monday talks about what breaks God's heart. But it also talks about what brings God joy. And what breaks God's heart is the way people treat each other. Defrauding someone else of their possessions or their money. 
or saying false accusations to another person, or actually holding back something that would be good for you to share with other people, your time, maybe your talents, or even your treasure. There's much that breaks the heart of God as it breaks our own. But there's much that, bra- that brings joy to God's heart. And when we look at the book of Luke 15, we see a picture of what brings God joy. And what brings God joy is people being saved. You and I get to enter into God's joy by joining Him in the work of witnessing. When we look at God and say, Wow, God, as I read your holy word, I see so many examples of where you desire that no one be lost, that you want all people to be saved. And that brings you joy, God. Lord, where are you at work so that I may join you and join you not only in the witness of how good you are, but to join you in the joy that you experience when you save people. God desires that we join Him in His work. The work, as our lesson study told us, only God can do. Only God can save. Jesus paid it all on the cross. Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He who knew no sin became our sin, that we might become righteousness unto God. Only Jesus, only God, only the Holy Spirit, only the celestial beings who had a plan in place before we were even created, knowing that love required a choice. The tree of life in the Garden of Eden here on earth and the tree of knowledge of good and evil that God put there, not to tempt them, but to make sure that they in their experience of being loved and in returning that love to God, had a choice. And all of heaven knew that we could go one way and stay with God or our own way. And they were prepared. They created a plan, a plan of salvation, a plan to reach out and to take the initiative and a plan to rescue us from our own self-centeredness, our own self-seeking, our own self-protection, our own self-provisions outside of God's will our own self-proving and trying to create our own identity separate from God. And this plan was put into place and it was a plan that included suffering for the Messiah, which included suffering for the Trinity. And it was His death on the cross in our place. And it was His glorious resurrection by the power of God calling Him forth from the tomb and Jesus rising to new life for us today. We are witnesses to this beautiful truth. What Tuesday talks about is what we receive from God, we are called to share with others. That we are called to pass on what God has given to us. We are not called to build a storehouse and to store all these blessings just for us. We are actually called to share those blessings with other people. To simply share and tell the story of God and what He's done in our lives. We may not have all the words. We might even fumble the words. We might even stumble. But do we trust God enough that His Holy Spirit could take our fumbling words? If He could take Moses, who stumbled in his speech, and call him forth to be his mouthpiece of encouragement to a beaten down people, to give them hope and to point them to a promised land flowing with milk and honey. If He could take a stumbling man and use his brother as well, He could surely take us and for us and empower us to be a witness. And in spite of our stumbling, fumbling words, the Holy Spirit can take with groanings too deep for our words to the Heavenly Father. He can also speak directly to the hearts of men and women that we come into contact with. Wednesday tells, asked a question about, we're called to be loyal to God. And being loyal to God is doing what He has called us to do, to be the witness He's called us to be. When you and I hold back our witness, we are holding back our desire to love God fully. When you and I hold back our witness, we're stunting our own spiritual experience and our growth. If you wonder at times, sometimes like I do, where's the spiritual power? Where is is God showing up in my life? One place we can look at and ask the question, am I serving and witnessing for God? 
just because he's asked me to, just because he's called me to, just because he's empowered me to. That might be one of the reasons why our spiritual life does not have the sense of dynamism or adventure or power because we're not drawing from our love for God on his resources to witness to the world around us. In Thursday, I love the picture that it paints for us that what God desires, we also des should desire. What God wants, we also should want. When you and I step into witnessing out of a of duty to God's call, out of a love for God and loving what God loves, which is saving men and women from all backgrounds, all walks of life, you and I, when we enter into witnessing with God, we are connecting our hearts to His own. The beauty about God is that He could have witnessed Himself. He could have sent all His angels out to tell people about Him. But He gave us the privilege and the joy and to experience what it's like to be on the front line sharing with men and women around us the goodness and greatness of our God. I want my heart to be in line with God's heart. I'm going to ask the question and write down the names. Who do I want to spend eternity with? I have a neighbor, his name is Josh, and his wife, Katie, and their two twin boys. I live here in my apartment on the second floor of this complex, and over the driveway into the backyard, him and I have conversations at a distance talking about life. They're moving soon, and I pray that they will be blessed when they move to their new place. But I'm also praying for them that they will know the goodness of God. I don't know where they are with God. I don't know what their thoughts are. But my desire is that they will know the fullness of God, that we will walk on the streets of gold together, that we will laugh and joy and reminisce about the good conversations we had on this earth. And my prayer is that not only will they be saved for heaven, but that they will experience the goodness of God right here, right now. I have more people on my list. And I pray that as you and I go about our week, that every day we will pray and ask, Lord, how do you want me to be a witness to my neighbor, Josh? How do you want me to be a witness to this family member? How do you want me to be a witness for the people I do business with in my community? God, how do you want me to step into your call to witness, to love, and to care for people? I don't, I don't just want to make friends with people so that I can save them by God's grace and by His power. I want to truly be a friend to people because God loves me and I get to love them, who they are, where they are, wherever they are. And I pray that you and I will step into this call of witnessing by God's power. Pastor Kyle sent the whole church an email, and if you have not received that email, it is a call. It is a call of resigning to our old ways, of living a life to ourselves, for ourselves. It's, a call, it's an exciting call for us that we pastors are taking on, and we're inviting you to join us to say, God, we're going to be about your kingdom. We're not going to be about ourselves anymore. We're going to be about you. What does your word tell us about your love for the lost? What does your word tell us about how to witness and how to care for people? What does your word call us to be and to do in this world? Many of you have taken up that call. Many of you said, count me in in that call from our senior pastor. I'm inviting you today as we study our lesson that this will be a way of helping us learn how to step into the call of God through us building his kingdom in our hearts and in the hearts of minds of men and women around us. For that, let us pray. God, we're beginning a new phase in our church. We have a new call from heaven above. We have been, the sail has been set, the rudder has been adjusted to the ship of the gospel that we are living in and moving in life through. Yes, as a church, we've had turbulent times and waves that have crashed that have hurt us at times in our past. But Lord, you've also brought us beautiful moments on the seas of your soul 
and your souls cry for the lost men and women of this world. We too have been lost. And in truth, some of us sometimes feel lost. But God, we renew our commitment to join you in building your kingdom on this earth through our personal witness and testimony of your goodness to us personally and what you're doing now in our lives. I pray you will bless every person who was engaging with me today in this study, that we will be a true friend to others as you have been a friend to us. Without thought to ourselves, may we give ourselves freely in your service as your witnesses by the power and love of the Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, amen. May you all be blessed as we move forward in this study that God has given us for this new quarter. Amen. Save your soul.